fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers, it's Universal Head here, and it's part two of the Dead Zone preparation painting video, put it all together and play with it series of videos. Now, in the last video, you were with me on the horrible journey as we created all these little miniatures, put them together, fixed them all up, and don't they look great? But now it's time to get on to some more exciting stuff as we head down the road towards painting your miniatures. And the first thing we have to do is give them a good wash. What? If you've seen our previous video on painting miniatures, you'll recognize this phase. We're just washing off the extra residue that gets onto the figures from the casting process. So take your plastic miniatures and put them in a bowl full of water with a little bit of detergent. Now make sure you put the plug in the bottom of the sink. You don't want any of your miniatures, precious miniatures, going down the sink and being lost forever. No, we won't. No, no. So, plump them in there. There we go. Take an old toothbrush and then give them a light scrub. Just cleaning off that residue. And then put them on a tea towel and let them dry. Right, now it's time to base our miniatures. Now there are many ways of basing your miniatures, from the most simple to the most complex. The most complex is probably to buy special decorative bases which are made of resin, quite expensive, well relatively expensive, and they can make your bases look absolutely beautiful. Or you can do it the very very simple and cheap way, and that's the way I've done it. And here we're using cutie litter. We have two cats, so there's always a lot of kitty litter in the house, and I've just crunched it up with a mortar and pestle so I get a nice variety of fine to coarse grains. And I use that to base my miniatures. How do you do it? I'm glad you asked. And here we go, we get some PVA white glue, squirt it out onto our palette, get an old brush, one that you're not using for painting, and will never use for painting again, and Put the glue on the base of the miniature, spread it around, like so. Now, get your crushed kitty litter ready. I'm just dipping it in the area of finer litter there. Dip it in, shake it across the base, give it a blow, and clean off bits around the edge. And there you have it. Now you can put in extra glue and put in larger rocks around the base if you want to decorate a little bit more. You can even add more decorative elements like bits of pipe and industrial wasteland scrapyard stuff if you like. It depends how much effort you want to put into this stage. I'm not putting too much effort in because I want to paint these suckers and get them on the table as fast as I can. And here's a quick tip. When you're pouring your kitty litter back into your jar, use a piece of paper like so. and it all goes cleanly back in. Hurrah! While we're waiting for those to dry, I'm going to do a bit of repair work on this figure. You may remember in the last video I did a bit of chopping and changing around this arm area and there's a bit of a gap in there that I want to fix. So, how do I fix it? With green stuff, that's how. You can get this stuff from Gaines Workshop or Army Painter and if you take off a bit of putty, an equal amount of yellow and blue, Mix it together using a bit of water. That just helps it not sticking to the fingers. And eventually, after a bit of kneading and manipulation, you come up with green. This is why it's called green stuff. Take a tiny piece of the green stuff, roll it into a little sausage, and then you can stick it in the gap. Like so, now this gets, gets very fiddly with fingers only, so a tool is useful, like this. This comes with different ends for sculpting. And using a little bit of water also helps. And then just push it into the gap. And you can try a little bit of sculpting to match the texture of the original figure. It's very easy and it'll just fill in those unsightly gaps. 
And there we go, I've filled in those gaps, just there, and I also did a little bit of work on some gaps at the shoulder areas of this sniper figure. Okay, after you've let those dry for a while, there's just one more thing to do before we finally prime these figures and get onto the painting stage, and that's just to seal our textured base a little bit. So I add some water to white glue, once again using an old brush, and get it quite milky, and then just paint it on the base. Try not to dislodge the kitty litter texture. And that just gives it a layer of PVA glue to seal that in and make sure it doesn't come off from the base. Once you've done all the figures like this, let them dry thoroughly and it's time to get on to priming. There we go, they're all ready and now we just have to wait for that to dry and they'll be ready for priming. Now don't worry, that white will dry to clear because it's a clear glue and it'll seal in those textured bases. So here's where I'm going to be spraying my figures. Well, up there in the back garden where none of the paint will go on the house. Um, what I've done is I've taken the figures and blue tacked them to this piece of cardboard so they won't go shaking around. Now, I won't actually show the spraying because I don't want any paint to go on that really nice camera. But I'm using white. Now, a lot of people use black as an undercoat these days. I prefer white. I've always used white. And the reason is, I can see the detail better when I'm painting. And also, I'll give them washes, which will do any sort of black lining effects for me. Um, I don't really see the need to paint with a black undercoat. I think white's much better, and it makes the colours pop a lot better too. So, I'm using white. I'll take my box like this. I'll give this a really good shake. And then I'll just do a clean coverage, moving the box around. So I do it from all the sides, and make sure I get all the detail. I always make sure I do this on a nice day like this where it's not too humid or wet or anything like that because that can cause problems with the paint coming out and uh, forming little granules on the figures which is no good at all. So just imagine me spraying and undercoating. That's what I'm doing right now. And there we go, it's all done. And you can see I gave it a nice even coverage from lots of different angles making sure I was getting into all the nooks and crannies. Now when you're finished spraying with your spray can, here's a little tip, turn it upside down and give it a quick spray to let out the excess stuff um, and that clears the nozzle so it won't be blocked for next time. So our figures are primed. We're finally up to the painting stage. Yay!